friends. Um, hello, friends. Oh, I'm so glad we're friends. And now that we're friends, I want to tell you two things about me. I'm black. Hey. <laughs> and I'm gay. Ooh, right. And these are two really cool things about me. But that's all I'm going to tell you. OK, bye. No. But when we hang out and develop our friendships, these two things will be the burden of our relationship. And moreover, I'm only going to tell you about the daily fears, the day-to-day -day struggles, the targeted physical and political attacks, and the historic trauma that comes along with these two things. What would that relationship feel like? And speaking about Hollywood, Shakina Johnson once said, our trauma has gone from subject matter to an entire genre. Does this sound familiar, American theater? In our theaters, how often does the whole story of people of color and marginalized people and oppressed people get reduced to the thing that makes us oppressed? I had planned to put up a slide about the last 10 years of Broadway shows, but I thought, since I'm amongst creatives, I'm going to let you use your sense memory or your imagination. The simple fact is, most of the time. Now, I'm not saying that we should never tell these stories. This is not a don't say gay or a ban on books, right? And my grandmother, Mary Geneva Milhouse, often said, baby, that's what she called me, <laughs> baby. How are you going to know where you're going if you don't know where you've been? Oh, we had the same grandmother. Who knew? <laughs> now, I'm not sure my South Carolinian grandmother coined this phrase, but her warning, her cautionary tale, is that we need to tell these stories so that we don't make the same mistakes from the past. But a curious thing needs to be examined about that. Who needs to keep hearing these stories because they keep making the same mistakes from the past. There are thousands of stories about people of color, trans, queer, the LGBTQ plus community, Native Americans, the disabled community, Jewish people, the deaf community. Thousands of stories that celebrate the full gamut of our human experience, and yet we continue to commission and produce stories that focus solely on our oppression, our trauma, are dying. And while these stories have important messages that must be told, maybe it's time oppressed people should avoid them as artists and as audience members to protect their own mental health needs. I don't know. And I'm sure that my grandmother Geneva's quote doesn't consider box office goals. Is that why we keep telling these stories? Or is it that some of us get excluded from conversations and decisions? Or is it a lack of empathy? Or, this is interesting for a creative industry, is it a lack of imagination? Or is it all for? Or is it something that we dare not speak of? Because when we tell these stories, we expect those who have been traumatized to show up. But those who have, who have lived with trauma in their DNA, to be entertained, to contribute to profits. And sometimes we're surprised when they don't. Imagine, imagine if I commissioned and produced a story about someone who's been sexually abused. And then I commission and produce another story about someone who's been sexually abused. And another, again, and again, and again, and again, as if there's th that's their whole story. Man, oh man, can it be re-traumatizing. Re-traumatization can be triggered by an occurrence or something someone says or in a situation that mimics the circumstances of the original trauma, like in a theater. 
There are these things called mirror neurons that fire up when we engage with stories. They make us jump at the scary parts and laugh at the funny parts and cry at the sad parts. What do you think those mirror neurons do when we, when we watch trauma that we may have experienced? Opening wounds can hurt a lot. Now, I'm not in the habit of celebrating dominant culture for doing the things you're supposed to do to fix these problems that we have because it kind of sends the wrong message. But I will say that I think we have made some strides in diversity work. There's more of us on stage and behind the scenes. Not always in our own stories, but there is more of us. We're tiptoeing into inclusion work. And maybe strides in this place can fix some of the problems I'm talking about. We have a long way to go with equity work and anti-racism work and anti-oppression work and anti-white supremacy work. And we are a long way. We are nowhere near justice work. So we're not going to take a victory lap yet. We still have a lot of evolving and maturing to do. Produce stories that celebrate the contributions of oppressed people rather than those that sensationalize trauma. Truthfully, I'm not sure you can tell stories about oppressed people without the oppression being a given circumstance. It just doesn't have to be the central or only plot point because our lives should matter outside of our trauma, right? There are lots of trauma-free blackness stories, trauma-free queerness stories, trauma-free stories of the oppressed. And I'm not trying to belittle the impact of oppression, nor am I trying to belittle the great trauma-centric stories that exist in our canon. Sadly, because of the dearth of trauma-free work, I have a fear about the amount of work marginalized people will get when we limit and decentralize trauma. What it means is we have a lot of commissioning, a lot of writing, and a lot of producing to do. So get to work. Also, it doesn't mean that we need to go overboard on the bio plays and the revisicals because we're also more than just entertainers. But that's a whole other TEDx talk. I won't go there. And when you don't re-traumatize us, I promise you, we will show up, maybe more than ever. This is not theater, and maybe not a fair comparison, but maybe it is. There are a lot of people that will disagree with me. But I wonder what happens if we try. Do we get a new canon of joyful work? Do we get a balance? Do we find a solution that may get us towards healing? So, friends, here's a short list of dramatic and theatrical parts of me that I'd love to share with all my new friends. I do laundry. I co-wrote a musical with Bob Marley. I lost 100 pounds. I love spinning to Taylor Swift songs. I only eat whole food plants. My auntie was a pitcher in the Negro Leagues. I have a crush on Idris Elba. <laughs> My husband's OK with that. I have the best husband ever. I'm pretty sure I'm the favorite child of Dorothy and James Bobbitt. I want a twerk lesson with Lizzo. Oh, 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 I missed one. I'm, I'm adapting Monster Mash to musical. Yeah. I hate sports ball. I want a twerk lesson with Lizzo. My son is a collegiate marine biologist. I'm the highest ranking government official in arts and culture for the state of Massachusetts. I have one correction. My husband would not agree about the laundry thing. Oh, this is the day I met my son at his orphanage in Vietnam. It's the beginning of a great and wonderful 21-year-old story that I would love to tell you.
Thank you.